My name is the Reverend Nigel Irons, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to St Edward's Church in Leek for our service of morning worship on this second Sunday of Lent, which will begin by singing our first hymn. God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit. A broken and contrite heart God will not despise. Let us come to the Lord, who is full of compassion, and acknowledge our transgressions in penitence and in faith. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. And so, may God, our Heavenly Father, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Collect for today, the second Sunday of Lent. Almighty God, you show to those who are in error the light of your truth, that they may return to the way of righteousness. Grant to all those who are admitted into the fellowship of Christ's religion, that they may reject those things that are contrary to their profession, and follow all such things as are agreeable to the same. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord had said to Abram, Go from your country, your people and your father's household, to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, 
and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you I will curse, and all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So Abram went as the Lord had told him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. New Testament reading, Romans 4, 1 to 5 and 13 through 17. What then shall we say that Abraham, our forefather, according to the flesh, discovered in this matter? If in fact Abraham was justified by works, he had something to boast about, but not before God. What does scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. Now, to the one who works, wages are not credited as a gift, but as an obligation. However, to the one who does not work, but trusts God, to, who justifies the ungodly, their faith is credited as righteousness. It was not through the, the law that Abraham and his offspring received the, the promise that he would be heir to the world, but through that righteousness that comes by faith. For if those who depend on the law are heirs, faith means nothing, and the promise is worthless, because the law brings wrath, and where there is no law, there is no transgression. Therefore, the promise comes by faith, so that it may be by grace, and may be guaranteed to all Abraham's offspring. Not only those who are the law, but also those who have made faith of Abraham. He is father of us all. As it is written, I have made you father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God, in whom he believed. The God who gives life to the dead and calls into beings that were not. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now... We'll sing our second hymn.
praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord is a great God. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice. Harden not your hearts. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the miraculous signs you are doing if God was not with them. In reply, Jesus declared, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. How can a man be born when he is old? Nicodemus asked. Surely he cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb to be born? Jesus answered, I tell you the truth. No one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but Spirit gives birth to Spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus. And you do not understand these things? I tell you the truth. We speak of what we know, and we testify to what we have seen. But still, you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things, and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak to you of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. And we pray now that as we reflect on it, you will meet us afresh in the power of your Holy Spirit and give us ears to hear, minds to understand, and hearts to receive your truth. In Jesus' name. Amen. Three scientists are sitting out in an orchard on a summer's day, doing some research. One of them looks up and shouts across to a colleague, Nothing yet. How about you, Newton? I want to think about discovery this morning, and specifically about a process of discovery that Nicodemus goes on as he seeks Jesus, submits to Jesus, and is finally satisfied by Jesus. Pharisees get a lot of bad press in John's Gospel, but the picture he paints of Nicodemus is notably different. He is not just your average Pharisee. He is a member of the Sanhedrin, a senior figure, a teacher of teachers. 
And his approach to Jesus is exceptional among his peers. Nicodemus takes Jesus seriously. He observes what Jesus does and reaches a point where he arranges to have a face-to-face conversation with him. This meeting happens at night because as a respected teacher of the law, Nicodemus does not want to compromise his reputation and integrity and authority by being seen with Jesus, which he knows would result in his fellow Pharisees sidelining him by classifying him as a follower of someone they believe is a blasphemer. First, Nicodemus seeks Jesus. This is not just a casual encounter. It is a prearranged meeting, which carries considerable risk for Nicodemus himself. Therefore, we can see that Nicodemus is very serious in his exploration of Jesus' identity and open to the possibility that his fellow Pharisees might be missing something really important. Nicodemus begins his conversation by saying, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. That's a very revealing statement. First of all, Nicodemus uses the word we, implying that perhaps he represents a small but secret group of like-minded religious leaders who are looking at Jesus with an open mind. Secondly, Nicodemus says that they recognise Jesus as a teacher come from God, which gives Jesus an exceptional standing. The normal route by which anyone came to be recognised as a teacher was for them to spend years training in the rabbinic schools and to become recognised and accepted by their peers. But Jesus had not done that. Nicodemus has come to see that he has therefore been sent by God. And Nicodemus then goes on to explain that the reason that he recognises this is because no one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. That is a profound conclusion, and one that Jesus intends those who come to him with an open mind to reach. John and the other Gospel writers wrote their accounts of Jesus' life for one reason only. And John states this clearly at the end of his own Gospel. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. If Jesus had performed no miracles, then he would have been no more than just an exceptional teacher. But the signs and miracles that accompanied his ministry were clear demonstrations of his divinity and, in Jewish understanding, of his identity as the Messiah. Later in his Gospel, John records the reaction of some people to seeing Jesus in these words. Still, many in the crowd believed him. They said, when the Messiah comes, will he perform more signs than this man? The importance of the miraculous signs that Jesus performs and their ability to verify his identity is a significant theme in John's Gospel. Later in chapter 10, John records how Jesus is angrily rejected by Jewish opponents who pick up stones to stone him. 
Jesus responds by saying, Why do you accuse me of blasphemy? Because I said, I am God's son. Do not believe unless I do the works of my father. But if I do them, even though you do not believe in me, believe the works that you may understand and know that the Father is in me, and I am in the Father. And at that point he miraculously walks away from them, even though they are trying to seize him. So this is where Nicodemus is at. He has seen the signs and miracles, and he understands their meaning. Jesus has come from God. And someone who has come from God deserves close attention. Nicodemus is therefore an example to us of the way in which we should read the Gospels. Jesus' ministry, as recorded in some detail by Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, is peppered with accounts of signs and miracles which demonstrate his divine power and authority over sickness, over the spirit world, over nature, and even over death itself. There are, of course, examples in the Old Testament of some of the prophets occasionally being used by God to perform miracles. But nowhere in the pages of Scripture do we find anyone performing these signs so prolifically and consistently as in the life of Jesus. And the conclusion that this points to is that Jesus was truly the Son of God as he claimed to be. If that is true, then we all need to do what Nicodemus did and seek him out. That's the most important thing I want to draw out of our Gospel reading this morning. So far, I've only talked about the first two verses, and the remainder of this passage consists of perhaps one of the most well-known conversations in the pages of the Bible. And in this conversation, it is evident that Nicodemus submits to Jesus. In John's record of the conversation, Nicodemus only speaks twice, and on both occasions it is to ask questions. When Jesus speaks about being born again, Nicodemus asks how this can possibly happen. Jesus goes on to explain very clearly that flesh is born of flesh, but to become alive in God we all need also to be born of the Spirit. Nicodemus then simply asks, how can this be? And in answer to that question, Jesus goes on to give one of the clearest summaries of the Gospel message in the whole Bible. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that whoever believes may have eternal life in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. What an amazing conversation, packed with clarity, revelation and truth. John's record of this encounter contains 431 spoken words. Of these, only 58 are spoken by Nicodemus. And at no point in this exchange does Nicodemus presume to have the authority to teach Jesus. He is there simply to question and to learn. Having sought Jesus out, Nicodemus submits to him and listens 
to what he has to say. And finally, I believe Nicodemus was satisfied by what he found in Jesus. And we can see evidence of this further in John's Gospel. In chapter 7, John records how the Pharisees scorned the temple guards who have refused to arrest Jesus, saying that Jesus has deceived them. But Nicodemus speaks up and asks the question, does our law condemn a man without first hearing him to find out what he has been doing? Then, after Jesus' death, John records that Joseph of Arimathea asks Pilate for Jesus' body, and that both he and Nicodemus take Jesus' body and wrap it in spices with strips of linen, according to the custom of the Jews, before laying it in a nearby tomb. Finally, Nicodemus feels he can hide no longer and declares by his actions in full public view his association with the man who became his teacher and set out God's truth to him much more clearly than Nicodemus himself had ever been able to set it out to others. Let's all be encouraged by Nicodemus and most importantly let us endeavour to be open like he was to truthfully seek Jesus and to trustfully submit to Jesus because when we do we cannot fail to be totally satisfied with what we find. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the example of Nicodemus as a seeker of truth. Stir up in us a fresh longing to discover more of your word and your ways as we look at the life of your Son. Jesus, thank you that you can teach us with greater authority than anyone else. Work in us the humility, not only to listen to your words, but to submit ourselves to you and obey them. Holy Spirit, thank you that you are able to bring Jesus' words alive to us as we open ourselves to you. Help us to find true satisfaction as we sit at Jesus' feet and then rise to follow him. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things, visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory, to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, 
who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now we'll sing our third hymn. Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful witness of a man with a passion to learn with spirit from others. We come to you now with all our needs and questions for the church and the world and pray that like Nicodemus, we may have his humility, spirit and a passion to learn from others too. Help us to trust in our own understanding, knowing that you not only have the answer, but that you are the answer. Gracious God, we recognise that the work of helping people through life can leave those who preach and chat the good news vulnerable to spiritual attack. We thank you for Nigel and all who preach and chat the good news, that they will receive encouragement and that you can give them the right words for each situation and each person and that they will always respond in love and forgiveness when difficulties arise. We thank you, loving Heavenly Father, for the promise of this time of year and for the reassurance that whatever else is going on in the world, even in the face of these awful atrocities, the beauty and freshness of the early spring flowers and the first green leaves remind us that you are still in control, that this is indeed your world. And while we may often despair of peace and justice ever happening, we have faith in your promise but in the end you will bring everything together under your authority. Until then, Lord, help us to value and to enjoy each and every sign of your faithfulness and love, for this gives us the security we need in an ever-changing world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, we pray for all in authority that they may never be tempted to abuse or misuse their power. Help and guide them to show wisdom and resolve in the search for reconciliation and peace 
and so bring peace and prosperity to every corner of the world, fractured by war, conflict or national disaster. We particularly pray for the conflict between Russia and Ukraine as it enters its second year, and also for the tragic earthquake in Turkey and northern Syria. We give thanks for the aid that has been given and for the promises of help that have been made by nations. Grant all those caught between life and death the gift of hope and to know that they can trust you to support them. Lord, please bring peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all, we thank you for our homes, our church family and the whole community as we think of the different families that make up this community of faith, we remember those who are not with us today for many and varied reasons, and for those who need to know you are close at this time. We see signs of blessing and also the need for love and care. We thank you for all the different activities that take place around our community, remembering all those who live and work here, who learn and play here, who love and care here, we bring them all before you now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember all who are fearful for the future. We pray for those who are seriously or terminally ill, for all who wait a doctor's diagnosis, all who await operations or treatment. And we remember in a moment silent all those on our newsletter and those known to us. Support and strengthen all those who share in the work of caring and healing, all who strive to bring help and relief, all who minister to others with care and compassion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we remember today all who mourn, their hearts broken by tragedy, tears a constant companion, laughter seeming a distant memory. Reach out into their pain, heartache and sadness and give them the knowledge that you understand their hurt and share their sorrow. And may your grace bring hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we thank you for the gift of this time together. We give it to you as a Lenten offering, a gift of ourselves. We thank you for being with us, for speaking to our hearts, strengthening our faith and reminding us that we are not alone on our journeys. Lord Jesus, your love is for all, whoever they may be. May it reach out then into every heart, in every place, and may we be a part of that, learning to love you as you love us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Christ is our peace. By one spirit we are all baptised into one body. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace be 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 with you. And now we'll sing our fourth hymn.
The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us, and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will, and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, for ever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms, and bring us with Edward, John, and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. May he open our hearts afresh to the power of his love as we remember the sacrifice of Christ. And let us commit ourselves afresh to follow him in the way of the cross. Amen.
O God, by whose command the order of time runs its course, forgive our impatience, perfect our faith, and, while we wait for the fulfilment of your promises, grant us to have a good hope because of your word, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free and the whole earth live to praise your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so we sing our final hymn. So, may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and in the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father who has created us, the Son who has redeemed us, and the Holy Spirit who breathes God's life, light and love into our hearts, rest upon you, remain with you, guard you, guide you, keep you, and strengthen you in his service, today and always. Amen. Thank you for joining us for our service here today. We extend a warm invitation to you to join us again next week for our service of morning prayer. Mm.